Okay, welcome to our discussion of the interference of thin films. Now, thin film interference is observed in many different things. Uh, they could be from oil spills, uh, the protective coating that you put on, on lenses so that you can get rid of certain frequencies like UV frequencies, and the iridescence that you get off of, uh, say, someone, uh, this hummingbird's feathers. So that beautiful rainbow-like colors that you see, whether they be in soap bubbles or oil slicks, is all part of thin film interference. Okay, so now this is a quite a lengthy discussion, and I'm going to try to make it as concise as I can. So we have to do a few review things. Um, review items. We have, uh, first of all, we need to review what happens when uh, the light travels from a less dense to a more dense medium. So, for example, you have an index refraction of 1 to an index refraction of 1.33. And in this case, what you'll see is the light will reflect off the surface. Some of it, of course, will transmit as well. But we're looking at this reflected light. And this reflected light will undergo a 180 degree phase change. This is very similar to basically a rope. When it hits a very rigid barrier that is more dense, that pulse will come back with a 180 degree phase shift. So it's flipped over on the other side. Now if this were to go in the reverse order and go from water to air here, then in this case you will have no phase change. This would be going from a more dense medium to a less dense medium and you can see it's similar to a rope that would hit a free end support and this pulse will go, undergo no phase change. Just like when you look in a mirror for example you would see a reversal of say words and uh, if it was an internal reflection that occurs inside the water for example you wouldn't actually see a reversal of those letters uh, which are on a shirt for example. So just looking down below, this is sort of a repetition um, that's going through here. There's a reflection that occurs. So here's your incoming wave coming here, trough, crest, trough, crest, trough. And then suddenly that should be a crest, but now the reflected wave has then undergone a 180 degree phase change. And now it's a trough, then crest, then trough, then crest, then trough, then crest. So this undergoes a 180 degree phase shift. Okay. So that means, when I say a phase shift, that means that this is now off by a half wavelength. And this reflection here that occurs, you can see it's a crest, trough, crest, trough, crest, and here there is no phase shift. So you don't have to worry about a half wavelength difference off between the two waves. So keep that in mind, that when we have reflections from a less dense to more dense, there is a phase change, and when you go from more dense to less dense, there is no phase change. We need to remember that principle. So now let's look at the next page. Oil and soap films, um, and we have this particular case. So we're going to look at a situation where we have, on the top here, we have, say, air, and then we have some thin film, for example, um, something like a oil film, so probably close to the index refraction of, of water, so we'll call that N2 as 1.3, Three, and air is 1.0 and then maybe you have air here as well so it's like a soap bubble here so this is back to air and so you're observing this whether it's a thin film or a soap bubble and there's your eye and what you're getting is two rays ray 2 and ray 5 are causing interference and giving you those spectacular colors that you see whether it's um, in whether it's from uh, any kind of situation camera lenses butterfly wings or peacock feathers or oil spills so let's just take a quick look and see what happens here. We have the initial light coming in along ray 1. Now technically it's really coming straight down, but we're drawing it off at an angle so that you can see the paths that are undergoing here. So the light comes in. Now of course not all the light is going to be transmitted. Part of it's going to be reflected and this is ray 2, right at the first surface. Then the rest of that light will be then refracted inwards along ray 3. And then once again part of it will transmit through back to the air and then part of it will reflect at the second bottom interface here and follow along ray 4 and then that will also reflect which I didn't show um, and then we're looking at ray 5 which is that refracted sh refraction that occurs right outside here so ray 2 and ray 5 are basically coming along together and that's where your eye is looking at and this is the interference between these two waves now the formula that we use for thin film interference is 
EPD stands for extra path difference because you can see that ray 5, hopefully you'll see, has really gone through an extra distance. It has to go on down along 3 and then up 4. And remember that this distance between the top layer and the bottom layer is labeled as T, which is the thickness of the film. So first of all, you can see that as the light travels along 3 and 4, it will go a total distance of 2T. That's where the 2t comes from. And then this little factor here, which I call the net phase inversion, uh, depends on whether uh, what kind of phase shifts occur at the top interface and at the bottom interface with what we were talking about over here. So for example, if you were to go from a less dense to a more dense medium, there would be a phase shift. And if you were to go from more dense to, to less dense, there would be no phase shift at all. So that's where this factor here, the net phase inversion, is going to be either two answers. It's either going to be zero or half a wavelength. Now zero would basically be cases A or B, and half a wavelength would be case C. Case A and B are shown down here. So if both reflections at the top interface and at the bottom interface are from less to more, which you're getting a phase shift of 180 degrees, and the other one's also 180 degrees, then really they both went through a phase shift, so they're really in sync with each other. Case B would be, say, if one were to go from more to less, that would be no phase shift. Um, so that would be both of them going through a no phase shift, and of course then they will still be in sync with each other. However, if one goes from less to more and the other one goes from more to less, uh, then in that particular case you have one that's going through a 180 degree phase shift and the other one is going through no phase shift, so they're different. So that means, well, there will be an extra half a wavelength difference between the two waves besides the fact that one ray 5 has traveled an extra distance to t. So basically your formula is either going to be EPD equals 2t or it'll be EPD equals 2T plus a half of a wavelength. Now what is EPD? Well EPD is the extra path difference and if you recall when we talked about constructive and destructive interference, I was just I guess I could write that down here, EPD equals M lambda for constructive interference and EPD will be equal to M plus a half of a wavelength for destructive interference. So those are two key ideas here, this one and this one. And you have to read the question carefully, whether they say, well, we want to see that particular frequency of light, we want it, that to be bright, then you're going to be constructive in interference. But let's say you want to eliminate a particular frequency, say you want to paint a thin film on a reflective coating on a, on a lens, and you don't want UV rays to come in, then you want destructive interference. So you have to read the wording carefully, and you'll see that as we go through the examples. Okay, one other very important aspect is because the inner, these waves are going through an extra path difference and when they go through that extra path difference that's occurring within the medium itself, then we need to be using the wavelength that's within the medium. So the wavelength within the medium is the wavelength wherever it is on the outside, usually that's air, and divide by the index or fraction within the medium. So that would be, for example, N2, it's the middle layer. Okay. So when we use, for example, m lambda or m plus half a lambda, then this is lambda sub n. That's the lambda that is in, within the film. Okay, so that's where this formula comes in. Now I wrote lambda vacuum, or actually I wrote lambda air before, but you can say that because lambda vacuum is usually pretty close or approximately the same as lambda in air. Okay, so let's move on from here, and I think the best way to take a look at it is example number three. So here's example three, and we have, and I'm going to walk you step by step as we go through here. Um, we have a thin film. Um, this is basically a little soapy film, um, and we're going to get that beautiful oil spill that you see. Now the index refraction in the film here is 1.4. The index refraction out here is air, and out here is air. So we're going to label this as N1, N2, and N3. 
Okay, let me walk you through this step by step. Of course, when you do a, a solutions later on, you do not need to go through all of these questions, but let's show you our thought pattern as we go through this. So, first of all, we want to know whether ray 2 undergoes a phase shift or not. And if you look at it, ray 1 starts off in air and then it goes into the film that is 1.4. So we're going from less dense to more dense. And if you recall, when you go from less dense to more dense, then you undergo a 180 degree phase shift. So the answer to that question is yes, there, it will be out of phase. So there will be a 180 degree phase shift. Now look at ray 5. Ray 5, we want to know whether that will undergo a phase shift with respect to the first original wave. So now we're looking at the reflection that's occurring at the bottom part of this. Uh, so we're looking at ray 4, and as that light comes in through here, we're going from more dense to less dense. So more dense to less dense is like a reflection with a free end reflection, and that is no phase shift. So the answer to that question is there is it is in phase or you could say no phase shift okay so that's one of your first steps to do is to first investigate the reflection that are occurring at both top and bottom interfaces then then you can determine from that whether the net phase inversion is going to be either zero or half a wavelength if these are different then they're off a half a wavelength. If these are the same, if they're both in phase and in phase, or out of phase and out of phase, then there is no phase shift. So you can see that the one has gone through a phase shift and the other one hasn't, so that means they have to differ by half a wavelength. So our net phase inversion is half a wavelength. Okay, next question is, if you want to see blue, then what do you use? Do you use constructive or destructive interference? Constructive or destructive? Well, you want to have that light to be visible. That means you want to have constructive interference. So that's the answer to D. Now, what would be our expression for the extreme path difference? Now, putting all of this together. So I'll just write down here, the extreme path difference would be equal to 2T. Why? Because it goes all the way down the distance T and then all the way up. That's the extra path difference plus the net phase inversion. Now the net phase inversion is half a wavelength because these two reflections are out of sync with each other. Now because we want constructive interference, then we want to set this equal to m lambda. So that's your setup. That's really E now. And now before we start plugging in lambda in here and figuring out what we put for m, we need to figure out what the wavelength is within the film. So where lambda in the film would be the wa wavelength in air divided by the index refraction in the film. That would be N2. So this would be 475 nanometers divided by 1.4. That will give you a wavelength of approximately 339 nanometers. Okay, so now we know what lambda is within the air. You can you don't have to put n sub lambda sub n. You could just put lambda there. Uh, it would actually the wavelength within the film. And now we want to solve for the usually the minimum would mean then the lowest that m can be. Obviously, we're not going to choose m equals zero because then or could we choose zero? No, if we choose zero here, um, then you'll get a negative. Uh, thickness. So we want to start with our lowest value that will give a positive answer. So um, we're going to set m equals to 1 for minimum thickness. Okay, and by the way, we just did f over here. Now, uh, and we set, we have 1, and then the wavelength is 339 nanometers equals 2 times t, the thickness that we're solving for, plus a half a wavelength, which is 339 nanometers divided by 2. And if you solve that, you'll get t minimum is 84.8 nanometers. So that would be the minimum thickness that you would need to have so that you would see blue light from that particular soap film. 
And that's it for example three and the introduction of thin film interference. And you can move on to example four, which I'll put up another video for.